Extra Holy Sunday. Yes. Right. Like that's sort of the unintended side effect of that sort of thing.
We, we were totally correct and protected. It's so much love. It really is so much love. Hey, Tony, you upstairs? Just checking. Good morning, Landon. I don't know.
I'm not sure exactly what everyone's going to do at any given time this morning, but Carrie is reading the gospel. And I don't know. Well, yeah, but I don't know microphone wise. Because she's not my. But she's going to be sitting over there for the this service. And she's got. Do you have the list of who's doing what? No, but it actually Okay. Okay, I'm unmuted. Good morning. Good morning, Robert. And I'm now unmuted. Good morning. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning, Michelle. How's everybody today? Oh, I'm doing just another day in paradise, you know. And, that, and yep. <laughs> Living the dream. Living the dream, yep. <laughs> Jim, are you able to add somebody to the prayer list, or should I ask Chris? It's a little no, I late. Can, I can Chris. do it. I'm doing those prayers anyway, so yeah. uh, just a second. Um, I have dear, dear friends in Oregon who have lost their home. Oh, no. Yeah, oh, like everything's gone. It was their retirement. It's, it's really... Let me find the list here, just a second. All right, and what, what is their name? Kimberly, okay. Kimberly, K I M B. I'll I'll write it in the chat. Would that be okay, or no? Yeah, or I'll I'll put it here too with the list. Okay. Kimberly and and Daniel O'Connor. I mean, we're not saying last names. I think, but Kimberly, Kimberly and, and Daniel. Daniel. And could you also add Sally, um, her mother, S A L L I E. Sally, her mother. Okay, is there more? She was, she was with them. No, well, Daniel's sister, but I don't actually know her name. And um, oh, Okay, so I'll put Kimberly, Daniel, and Sally. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Good. Good These good. are people, Kimberly and Sally, her mother, are people I've known my entire life. She was like my first friend. Were they originally from here? Uh, yeah, they were originally from Michigan. Okay. Sorry to hear that, Michelle. Hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. really, I can't even fathom what, what they must be going through with their two dogs and them. They're in a temporary shelter right now. Oh, dear. Sally, Sally is flying home to New York City. She, she actually went there to escape the crazy COVID stuff going on in New York City back in March. So she's going back to New York because, you know, they don't need to be trying to figure out how to house a third person, a fourth person, really, because the sister's with them, too. So it's Well, it and the air is probably not good for the mother to be breathing either, because I'm sure, you know, with all the fires, it's terrible. Mm. It's pretty bad. Mm. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, Michelle. Yeah, thanks. 
been really <clears throat> feeling sad about them. Hey, Tony, are we ready up there? Let me go find the priest. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Ken. You can mute everyone. Eight o'clock service. We welcome all of you who are joining us virtually. Our focus this morning is on God, what God is doing in our lives, and how we can best respond to God's action. As we listen to We're doing prelude music next. Yes. As we listen to the prelude, let us focus and calm ourselves. Lay aside our concerns that will be right there for us as soon as we choose to pick them up. And maybe there are some concerns that by the end of this service, we'll decide we don't need to pick up. We meet in the name of God, creator of the universe, source of true humanity, mother and father of all. Amen. We meet in the name of Jesus, word made flesh, savior of fallen humanity and lover of all. Amen. We meet in the name of the Holy Spirit, Lord and giver of life, midwife of new humanity, inspirer of all. Amen. Come, then eternal God. Be present here, befriend us here, renew us here.
let us pray. O oh God, because without you, we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may, in all things, direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Can you open up Michelle's mic? A reading from the book of Exodus. Listen now for the word of God. The angel of God who was going before the Israelite army moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel, and so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the Israelites for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at dawn, the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant, servant Moses. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. A reading from Psalm 114. Alleluia, when Israel came out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange speech. Judah became God's sanctuary and Israel's God domain. The sea beheld it and fled. Jordan turned, back, turned and went back. The mountains skipped like rams and the little hills like young sheep. What ailed you, O sea, that you fled, O Jordan, that you turned back? You mountains, that you skipped like rams, you little hills like young sheep. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of God, 
and at the presence of the God of Jacob. Who turned the hard rock into a pool of water and Flintstone into a flowing spring. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii, and seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prisons until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, you wicked slave, 
I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or your sister from your heart. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. In this morning's readings, we have two contrasting understandings of sin, forgiveness, and the consequences of sin and God's action. I was going to totally s skip the Old Testament reading because I hope that really isn't what God did to the poor Egyptians, although the Egyptians certainly deserved it. But my understanding of God is not of a God who's going to pour uh, the, the, the river on top of you and drown you all out, or the sea. Um, I think that perhaps that was the natural consequences of whatever meteorological uh, episode was happening in their world, and the, Egyptian, the Israelites interpreted it as God's judgment on the people of Egypt. Though the people of Egypt certainly deserved consequences to their action. We've been hearing the story of Moses week after week. We know that Moses was a flawed human being, just like you and me. We know that Moses committed murder, which makes him perhaps as guilty as the Egyptians. We know that Moses didn't want to go back to Egypt and try to free his people. That he had quite a little discussion with God about that situation. But we know that Moses, in the end, did return to Egypt, did proclaim God's will for freedom of the people. And after broken promise, after broken promise, after lie after lie, finally, the devastating consequences of such a corrupt system of governing resulted in the Israelites being able to flee. And in this episode, we have the final act of freeing the Israelites. I think probably next week we get to hear about how the Israelites immediately turned and started complaining that they were better off as slaves in Egypt. So human, wanting one thing, working hard for it, and then when we get it, proclaiming that isn't what we wanted after all. God, change your mind, do something different. In today's gospel reading, Peter asks a logical question, how long do I have to forgive? And we need to remember that the number seven is the perfect number in, in the Bible. The number of completion, the number of the totality. And so Peter says, do I have to forgive seven times? 
the complete number? And Jesus' answer is no, 77 times. In other words, forever. And that is perhaps one of the hardest lessons we humans have to learn, to truly forgive, to truly let go of our perceived hurts, our perceived uh, wrongdoing to us, to not harbor anger and vitriol in our hearts towards those whom we perceive and perhaps and all too likely truly have not been just towards us. One of the things I think we forget is Jesus' call to practice forgiveness basically eternally, is a call to our own self-care. For when we harbor hatred, when we harbor anger, when we harbor unforgiveness, it physically does things to us, to our human bodies. Science knows that. And so Jesus calling for us to be people who forgive is calling us to people who will be healthy, people who will hold the open hand rather than the clenched fist. And in this gospel reading, we have the story of the slave who owned the owner much and was forgiven, who then turned to the one who owed him and was unforgiving. You and I live in a nation that is so filled with anger, with hatred, with vitriol, with unforgiveness right now. We so desperately need to learn the message of today's gospel, the message that we can disagree without hatred, that we can have different perspectives without trying to reap down plagues on those who view us differently. And we live in a country that is desperately in need of those who hear Jesus' words to practice forgiveness without forgetfulness, to practice acceptance without accepting the unacceptable, to see our fellow human beings as the beloved creatures of God that they are, and to understand that their lives are just as precious to God as our own, and that we can only follow our Lord and Savior as we learn to stand up for our principles but not desire retribution or horrible things on those who differ from us. It is indeed a difficult task, but it is one that Jesus calls us to, and it is the one that offers the task that offers us life and hope, not only for ourselves, but for this country of ours. Friends, we are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God, who has created and is creating, who has come, come in Jesus, Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make, make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. Spirit. We, we trust in God. We are, we are called, called to be the church, church to celebrate God's presence. 
to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Gracious God, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Fill it with all truth and all truth with all peace. Where it is corrupt, purify it. Where it is in error, direct it. Where in anything it is amiss, reform it. Where it is right, strengthen it. Where it is in want, provide for it. Where it is divided, reunite it. For the sake of Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom comes every good and perfect gift, send down upon our bishops and other clergy and upon the congregations committed to their charge the healthful spirit of thy grace and that they may truly please you pour upon them the continual dew of your blessing we pray especially for michael our presiding bishop bonnie our diocesan bishop Moises, diocesan bishop of our sister diocese in the Dominican Republic. Elizabeth, Donald, and Craig, bishops of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. Chris, our rector. Chris and Christine, our retired priests. The people of All Saints Pontiac. St. Mary's in the Hills, Lake Orion. Trinity Church, Farmington Hills, Christ the King, Taylor. Amen. Amen. Lord God Almighty, you have made all the peoples of the earth for your glory, to serve you in freedom and in peace. We beseech you to guide and defend our elections. May your spirit guide those who seek to lead us. May they strive to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly before you as their God. Amen. Amen. We also acknowledge our responsibilities as citizens who must someday account for decisions and actions taken in our name. May we vote wisely and those whom we elect be faithful administrators of wise laws, committed to protecting and advancing the rights of all people. May our nation be enabled to fulfill your reconciling purposes at home and throughout the world. Grant us these petitions through the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. O oh God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth, that in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony 
around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty and most merciful God, we remember before you all poor and neglected persons whom it would be easy for us to forget. The homeless and the destitute, the old and the sick, and all who have none to care for them. Help us to heal those who are broken in body or spirit and to turn their sorrow into joy. Grant this, Father, for the love of your Son, who for our sake became poor. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray also for those who have entrusted their needs to our intercession on their behalf. Anna Mary. Barbara. Bonnie and Rod. Brent. Carol. Carolyn. Catherine. Chris and Lisa. Christine J. Cindy and John. Debbie. Diana. Diane. Elaine. Eleanor. Gordy. Greg. Heidi and Mark. Holly. Hugh. Irma and Susie. James. Jerry. Julie. June. Karen. Karen and Mike. Kelly. Ken. Kimberly, Daniel, and Kimberly's mother, Sally. Luana. Lois. Marsha. Meg. Nicole and Steve. Pat. Olga. Ron. Ross. Reuben. Sean. Sheldon. Sue. Sydney. Taylor. The Reverend Twyla. Wolfgang. Yuri and Tatiana. We pray for all those who have died and for all victims of the coronavirus, other disease or illness, acts of war or violence, and the devastating fires in the American West. Almighty God, we entrust all people to your never failing care and love for this life and the life to come, knowing that you are doing for them better things than we can desire or pray for. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on all who celebrate the beginning of, of another year, especially Meg, Alan, Karen, Arnold, Chris, Gail, and Ken. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage, that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send your blessing upon all couples, especially Cindy and John, celebrating anniversaries this week, and grant them your grace, that their lives together may be a witness to your love and forgiveness, and that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Living God, may they not fail you, nor we fail them. O Christ, the master carpenter, who at the last, through wood and nails, purchased our whole salvation, wield well your tools in the workshop of your world, so that we who come rough you unto your bench may here be fashioned to a truer beauty of your hand. We ask it in your own name's sake. Amen. Amen. 
Let us in silence confess our faults and admit our frailty. Before God and with the people of God, I confess to my brokenness, to the ways I wound my life, the lives of others, and the life of the world. May God forgive you, Christ renew you, and the Spirit enable you to grow in love. Amen. Before God, with the people of God, I confess to my brokenness, to the ways I wound my life, the lives of others, and the life of the world. May God forgive you, Christ renew you, and the Spirit enable you to grow in love. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Heaven is here and earth, and the space is thin between them. Distance may divide, but Christ's promise unites those bound by time, those blessed by etern eternity. Let heaven be glad. Let the whole earth cry glory. Heaven is here and earth, and the church above and below is one. The saints are with us, those from far back and those who left us not long ago. And only sight prevents us from seeing them, one with us on the other side. Let heaven be glad. Let the whole earth cry glory. Heaven is here and earth, and God who made them is present. The Lamb, glorious on the throne, sits beside us. The Spirit of God, the dove, makes her resting place among us. God inhales the breath of our prayers and spreads a table for our satisfaction. Let heaven be glad. Let the whole earth cry glory. Blessing and honor and glory and power be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Therefore, with the church throughout the world, 
with the church on the other side of time, with those who once praised you here and have now joined the closer harmony of heaven, we sing the song of your everlasting praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And now, setting our wisdom, our will, our words aside, emptying our hearts and bringing nothing in our hands, we yearn for the healing, the holding, the accepting, the forgiving which Christ alone can offer. Lest we believe our praise alone fulfills your purpose, we fall silent and remember him who came because words weren't enough. Merciful God, send now in kindness your Holy Spirit to settle on this bread and this wine and fill them with the fullness of Jesus. And let that same Spirit rest on us, converting us from the patterns of this passing world until we conform to the shape of him whose food we now share. Among friends gathered round a table, Jesus took bread, broke it, and said, This is my body broken for you. Later, he took a cup of wine and said, This is the new relationship with God made possible because of my death. Take it, all of you, to remember me. Jesus, firstborn of Mary. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Savior of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, monarch of heaven. Grant us peace. As our Savior Christ has taught us, let us now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. He whom the universe could not contain is present to us in this bread. He who redeemed us and called us by name, now meets us in this cup. So, take this bread and wine. In them God comes to us, so that we may come to God. of Christ right.
Let us pray in gratitude, in deep gratitude for this moment, this meal, these people. We give ourselves to you. Take us out to live as changed people because we have shared the living bread and cannot remain the same. Ask much of us. Expect more from us. Encourage many through us. So, Lord, may we live to your glory, both as inhabitants of earth and citizens of the commonwealth of heaven. Amen. Christ, who has nourished us, is our peace. Strangers and friends, male and female, old and young, he has broken down the barriers to bind us to him and to each other. Having tasted his goodness, let us share the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. peace. Go now to follow in the way of Jesus. See others as he did. Dare to give freely as he did. To love unconditionally as he did. To go embraced by the source of life, love, and hope in the company of the word of life, encouraged by the breath of life. Um. Amen. Are there announcements that need to be made? Well, one I know of isn't the uh, adult forum today at uh, 9 o'clock, 9.15. If you go, if you manage to get to this service, if you go back to the same link, you can find the link for the adult forum. And I want to wish Ken a happy birthday this week since we prayed for him. And yes, we had quite the birthday list going on. Um, and I also want to say it was great to be here. Um, I, uh, I always love being able to be at my home church and serve you. Um, and uh, uh, Chris Berg is on vacation in the Upper Peninsula where he doesn't have internet access. Chris Johnson did a wedding yesterday up in the Thumb and then went over to uh, their place over on uh, the west side of the state, and we'll be back on Tuesday. Um, I would just say I was honored to be able to visit with Ken yesterday and his uh, son and daughter and daughter-in-law, and uh, keep Ken, not this Ken, Kimber, in your prayers. Um, and, uh, and one of the things that was mentioned was that at one point, Carol had asked people to send cards. And she was telling me how Ken's face just lit up, lit up and how much she enjoyed looking and looking at those cards. And I would just use that as a reminder to all of us in this time when it is so hard to reach out and touch one another. Perhaps one of the most touching things is as simple as a little card or a little note sent unexpectedly, without any reason, just because a person came to your mind and you acted. Oh, I'm supposed to give a final blessing or a final dismissal. That's what I'm supposed to do, a dismissal. Oh, uh, 
Oh, that's a weird dismissal. Okay, let our, oh God, let our mouth proclaim your praise. And your glory all the day long. Hello. 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 Hi there. Uh, I just have a couple of practical questions in the next few minutes when we begin the um, adult forum. Um, I'm not sure who is hosting that. If Tony can just uh, be on hand for the beginning of that to let us in, it's either going to be Michelle or Alan. Alan has um, a PowerPoint presentation, and when we met uh, last time to plan, he said he would be in a good position by this time to be able to show those, but with people being gone and new people being here, I just want to make sure that the transition is clear to everyone. Just, can anyone tell me the Ken that Chris was referring to? Who is that? Ken Burke. Mm, okay. Is that Lisa Barnier? Yes, it is. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Lisa. Hi, Robert. How the heck are you? Just another day in paradise. I know. We're grooving, aren't we? Yep, we are. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, all you homebound people. How are you? Good morning. Hello. There we go. Now we can see a few people. Hello, Ken. Good morning, Valerie. I hear Valerie's voice. Good morning, Valerie. Good morning. Hi, Val. This is Lisa. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Michelle's muted. She's waving. Good morning, Michelle. <laughs> How does, um, is somebody going to be up there to help us get into the adult forum? That's, that was my concern a few minutes ago. Alan has a PowerPoint presentation today, and he was learning the ropes with that and said he would be prepared by today. But since the usual people are gone, that wasn't discussed. So, Tony, we'll, are you we'll going to be up there at the control? Loose. Adult form, Mr. Tony. Are you going to be up there for the adult forum at the controls? No. No. We have a designated host for that meeting until the host can be switched to the person who's hosting. But Tony will not be up in the projection area. So who's going to start out the meeting? Landon, is Landon? Ken, can you track down Landon or Tony and ask him? Yes. In a, in a moment or two. As as okay. Chatting, we'll work it out, group. Okay, thanks. So okay. we'll see you at 9.15. Someone will yeah. get let us in and then we'll switch the host. Okay. 
be those of you who are We need coming. someone to let us into the program from, from where you are. Where am I? You are at All Saints. <laughs> you're, at, you're at the corner of walk and don't walk. Well, it, it's funny because I'm looking at my little corner up there and I see Terry. <laughs> oh, yeah, I do too, but I don't see you. That's because I got the laptop and the sacristy. I see. Oh, okay. Ah. Quite the correct distance from Ken, but close. <laughs> All right, I'm signing off. I'll see some right, of you. We'll see see you everybody time. later. Be well. Thank you. Right, everyone. Yeah. Be good. Have a good week. Bye. You too. Let's see you soon, like 10 minutes, five minutes, however long. <laughs>